Hello, everybody. I think that uh, you can hear me now. Uh, good morning. Thank you all for attending this webinar. We are starting now because it's the time. Uh, thank you all for attending the web webinar on robotic technologies on serious game for neural rehabilitation, organized by Technalia and funding, funded by the IT Health. My name is Sainara Garzo. I'm a senior researcher in neural rehabilitation area in Technalia, and I would like to introduce you today's speakers. Today, um, first, uh, sorry. First, uh, Dr. Thierry Keller, the head of the neural rehabilitation department at Technalia, will make us an introduction on the robotic technologies for the neural rehabilitation. Then Samantha Rosebing from the University Medical Center of Groningen will explain us uh, her experience using the marine robotic system for the re rehabilitation of the post-stroke patients in the Netherlands. And finally, Pablo Casado from the University Hospital Reina Sofia in Córdoba will give, a, give us some preliminary results from the usability evaluation of this uh, marine robotic system carried out in the south of, of Spain in, in Andalusia. The talks will take uh, about uh, 15 minutes each, and then we will have uh, 15 minutes uh, for, for some questions. As you could see, you all are muted during the talks for having fluent presentations. Uh, so please use the, the chat or question sections in, in, in the system for sending us any requests or questions questions for the speakers and I will reach out to them to, to our speakers at the end of the webinar. Uh, now I don't want to disturb the, the speakers today and I will give uh, the control to, to Thierry to start with uh, the presentation. Let me check if I'm doing it properly. Yeah, I think that you can talk. Can you? Uh, yes, I can talk. talk so I can <laughs> my, Hi. my presentation. But I think and... I do not have the. Ah, oh, now I get the. Okay. Also the presentation. So, okay. So welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. So I'm happy to introduce to you um, the part of uh, robotic technologies and serious games uh, for neural rehabilitation. So this will take about 15 minutes. Um, can you see my screen? I only can see a blank screen. Yeah, that's a bit strange. So let me let me see. So now, now should be okay. No, yeah, now we can see it, yeah. Okay, so, so um, the trend towards advanced neural rehabilitation technologies uh, is uh, mainly necessary because we have two main effects. One is the demographic change and also the increase of uh, neurological disorders. So this gives a high pressure on hospitals, specifically lack of resources for therapies. Um, of course, also the, there is an increase, or as a result, there is an increase of, health, of healthcare costs. Um, we think that uh, advanced rehabilitation technologies, um, they can, when they are efficient and effective, they can be used um, to basically overcome this lack of uh, resources also results from uh, clinical evidence, uh, uh, specifically on motor learning, um, help uh, towards that goal. Uh, okay. So uh, robotics can mainly or is nowadays mainly applied for uh, motor learning. So this involves uh, three kinds of uh, learning. So one is uh, memorization, 
Then uh, second one is the minimization of uh, errors. And the third one is uh, on uh, effort, on reinforcement learning. So a lot of repetition with feedback. When we look uh, um, uh, as an example after a stroke, so then there are non-learning dependent uh, effects, uh, mainly spontaneous recovery that help to improve. But there is also the learning dependent uh, part that you can see down here that basically is task performance, then experience, experience dependent uh, plasticity that then mainly leads, and this we know, to substitution of the function by compensation. Whether there is also restitution going to happen as it is with spontaneous recovery is still issue of research. Uh, when we look at the neural principles and, uh, and learning, so motivation is one of the main factors. So this brings us into what we call the serious gaming and so on. So we need to be motivated in this learning process and we need to have feedback from um, what we are doing. And the third factor is we need repetitions to accomplish. And that's where we see that uh, rehabilitation robotics can help. So rehabilitation robotics can be used unilaterally. So after a stroke, only one side is mainly affected, but it can also be used bilaterally for bimanual tasks Another factor that uh, from a technological point uh, is handled by rehabilitation robotics is to train specific uh, degrees of freedom. So we can have two degrees of freedom like a planner movement or we can have more complex robots that uh, go into full space and then you can use this robotic therapy uh, in full movement in all three dimensions. You can also have, and this is another category of robotics that uh, concentrates on uh, individual limbs. So this is, for example, elbows or only fingers uh, that uh, are then trained. When we are looking on the other side, so the rehabilitation platform, it mainly involves planning, execution and assessment. So in this figure, you can see that this can be around the task itself. It can be around the full session, a full therapy session, or it can be around the entire therapy. So at the moment, these uh, robotic systems mainly are automated on the, on the task uh, themselves. And what we try to do is we try to give them more uh, intelligence to move them that they also can control from one session to the other or assess, plan and execute uh, in, in sessions. Um, the entire therapy is still um, nowadays and in the future handled by the therapist uh, and supported there. So to have this move uh, from task to, to session, we believe that we can facilitate a lot of support to the therapist and to act against this lack uh, that we observe. So when we look uh, um, at the rehabilitation uh, platform software, so normally you have like a patient management, therapies, uh, you can see results, you plan, you use uh, calendar functions, then you have games involved and you have assessment. Um, as a component. On the therapy uh, games and, and training games, um, we can change the level, we can increase the level of complexity or of, uh, of uh, what needs to be done. For example, you can see it here so that you have a few uh, puzzle stones that you have to put together or you can go to more so you can increase the level. And what we want to do with uh, basically with our training goals in motor rehabilitation is then to train different um, categories of, of movement. So 
This can be a training on range of motion. This can be training on the force that the person can exert still. Uh, training on speed, on precision and accuracy, on endurance, um, on control of movement, or also on task execution times um, that uh, we get faster or that we have a higher frequency, higher speed to uh, develop or to achieve a, a certain goal, for example. The uh, the way how we want to increase this uh, this uh, level um, on the task uh, themselves or on the games themselves, we do with uh, uh, an assessment. So that's one of the proposals. So either the game itself can learn or you perform some specific assessment tasks using uh, software where you can increase the level of difficulty, where you can increase also the level of precision. So when we look in general on mobility assessment, we mainly have the motion that we can measure and the force that we can measure. And then as parameters, we have the range and we have the, the level of, of control. So this gives us some metrics, for example, the length area or the smoothness or the force range or also the force smoothness. And with this, we can have the range of motion, we can have the quality of movement, we can have the range of force or the quality of force. When we then transform what we learn in the assessment games um, in, in terms of uh, range of motion or quality of movement, uh, then we can translate this to the training games in an automatic way and therefore can make a full automatic adaptation. Um, the training games themselves, so the, there is a, a very nice work from Annick Timmermans, uh, she is from Hasselt University, that has published uh, criteria for effective stroke rehabilitation therapy. So there she postulated that uh, a good uh, a software or good games for, for training, they need to have the, adapt the adaptability of the motor skill level. They need to have uh, meaningful tasks. They need to uh, give uh, appropriate feedback and uh, the therapy uh, should be appropriate uh, in the range of motion that can be done with it. So um, the uh, focus uh, should be diverted from, from the exercise. So that is a, a big uh, motivational component. So it should also promote intentional movements and it should quantitatively uh, measure uh, what is the outcome. So this, with this, I would like to conclude my part and uh, switch over, hand over to uh, Ainara. Okay, thanks for your presentation, Thierry. Uh, so I will give the control to, to Samantha to go on with the presentations today. Um, we'll switch to Samantha. Hi, Samantha. I'm giving you the control. I know. Could you share the Yeah, we can see your your screen. I think that yes. we can hear you now. Thank okay. you. Sorry. Yes, great. No, no problem. Okay, so get me presentation. Oh, good morning, and thank you all for joining this webinar. Um, my name is Samantha, and I'm a junior researcher from the University Medical Center in Groningen in the Netherlands. And I will, um, yeah, I will show you the results of the clinical study that was performed within the Merlin project. 
So in Europe, there are 1.1 million stroke survivors, and this population is uh, really large and only increasing due to an older population. And if patients go into rehabilitation, uh, sometimes they still have remaining deficiencies in their arm and hand function. Around 75% of the patients that leave the rehabilitation center still cannot use their arm uh, or hand completely in daily life. And as you can imagine, you use your arm and hands a lot. So this has a large influence on our quality of life. Furthermore, all the rehabilitation is costing a lot of money. So in, Net in the Netherlands, 2.5% uh, of the total healthcare costs are dedicated to stroke care. So we would like to help this really large population of stroke patients to increase their arm and hand function uh, for, the min for minimal costs for sustainable healthcare. And one of the things that can uh, yeah, help this uh, change is to move the rehabilitation from the center or the hospital to home. And especially now during the COVID uh, pandemic, we see that this is really important because a lot of patients didn't have any, uh, yeah, any therapy in the last few months. So if patients would have been able to train at home, they could have continued uh, to improve their arm and hand function. And we think we can uh, contribute to this change. So in this project, we uh, combined two systems. On the one hand, we have the hardware, which is the arm assist, a low cost robotic device uh, to improve the arm and hand function. And on the other side, we have Antari Home Care, which is a tailored rehabilitation platform. And these two systems are merged together in this project, um, which yeah, uh, gave us Merlin Home Care Arm Rehabilitation. And I will uh, explain both systems briefly. So as I say, uh, yeah, we had the arm assist, which is uh, by Technalia, a low cost robotic device to uh, use uh, using serious games to train the arm and hand function. And it can perform uh, different movements, such as movement in the horizontal plane, which is the same as you use, for instance, your computer mouse. You move it over the table and an avatar on the screen is, uh, yeah, is showing the movement. Furthermore, it can perform grasping movements, uh, mass extension and flexion. It can perform a wrist rotation. And lastly, it can perform a lifting movement. And these different movements are uh, used to interact with the serious games. Uh, these are task specific serious games. And also the different movements can be combined to make it even more difficult uh, for the patient. And on the other hand, we have the software, which is the Antari Home Care platform. And this is more on the side of the therapist. So here the therapist is able to assign different games to the patient using the different movements. Uh, there is direct contact between uh, the patient and the therapist to see how everything is going and if there are any problems. And lastly, uh, the tailor rehabilitation platform is able to show the therapist if the patient uh, really did the training and how well he performed on the different games. So in our study, we, uh, have, we included 12 chronic uh, stroke patients that are more than six months post-stroke and they did not, uh, they were discharged from the rehabilitation center. Uh, we used the within subject design, which looks schematically like this. So patients started at T0, which was the baseline measurement, and then six weeks after we measured them again. Uh, in this period, they did not have any training. So uh, this was to see if there was any natural recovery. This is not expected because patients were in a chronic phase of stroke, but of course we need to control for that. Then patients started the intervention. This was six weeks uh, of training with the Merlin system. And they, we, were, we asked them to train three hours per week. They were able to determine how much they wanted to train uh, during a therapy session and when they wanted to do this therapy session. We gave them some guidelines, for instance, uh, six days a week, three, uh, half an hour a day, but they were able to determine if they wanted to deviate from that. And then after the intervention, we performed a measurement again, and six weeks after to see if any improvement also was retained. So during the measurement moments, uh, T0, 1, 2, and 3, uh, we performed different arm function tests, such as the Fugelmeyer assessment, the Wolf motor function test, and the action research arm test. The latter one you see here uh, in the picture. And these uh, tests are to see how well patients are able to move, to, yeah, to use their arm and hand. Uh, for instance, uh, performing different movements with their arms and uh, picking up different objects with different grasps. 
Then also we wanted to see how well, how happy the patient was with the user experience of the device. So we had a few questionnaires, uh, the system usability skill, the intrinsic motivation inventory, and the Dutch version of the uh, Quebec user evaluation of satisfaction with assistive technology. Um, and furthermore, we also performed in-depth interviews to gain more um, yeah, information on how the patients uh, perceive this experience. However, this was uh, part of a separate uh, project within Merlin. For the analysis, we used a repeated measure ANOVA with Bonfroni correction uh, to correct for multiple measurements. So these are the patient characteristics. So patients were on average 65 years old. We had a little bit more than male than females and patients were on average 22 months uh, post-stroke, which is almost uh, two years. Um, there were more, uh, there, the, most patients had a ischemic stroke. And as you can see, the dominant side, everybody was uh, right hand was dominant. And that means that five patients had, uh, were affected on the dominant side and seven patients on the non-dominant hand. So here you can see uh, how it looked like the patients that were training at home. Uh, so patients could set up the system on, for instance, the dinner table if they had enough room, or they could um, yeah, make a specific spot uh, in the attic, for instance, to train. Uh, the system would always be uh, at the um, uh, at the table, so patients could easily just start the training without having to set up anything. Of course, we also, uh, yeah, COVID-19 reached the Netherlands uh, halfway of March. So we were not able to go to the patients anymore to perform the different measurements. So therefore we had to adjust and perform the measurements online. So we would bring the equipment to the patients at a safe distance, of course. And uh, we would set up a video connection to perform the measurements. However, this was really difficult because for some, uh, test specific grasps are needed and it's really difficult to see that of course if you're not really next to the patient so therefore we ask the family member to be our eyes uh, on site to see if really the specific grasp was used well then on to our results so the first test uh, arm test was the fugumire assessment and in this test uh, we see if patients are able to also move away from the synergies that are mostly occur during stroke so we see on the y-axis uh, the score of the Fugelmeyer, which is between 0 and 66 points. And on the x-axis, we see the different measurement moments. Uh, you see a lot of significant differences. The most important one is, of course, uh, between T1 and T2, the intervention period. And uh, there was a significant difference, meaning that patients uh, sig significantly improved the arm function after uh, training with Merlin which was, of course, really, uh, really great. Uh, also important is to see that there wasn't a significant difference between uh, T0 and T1, uh, which is the control period. This was also expected, of course, because no therapy was provided uh, during uh, these six weeks. And also, we do not see a significant difference between T2 and T3. Uh, that's me the meaning that uh, after the intervention, the improvement was retained, retained after six weeks. So here we see a few significant, a few uh, the, the change on the Fugelmeyer in points, and now we want to know if this is really, uh, yeah, saying something to the patient because the main point of doing this is that the patient improves the arm and hand function. So therefore, we use the minimal clinically important difference, and this is a uh, the amount of points on this test that is really clinically meaningful and relevant to the patient. So for this test, uh, that is uh, six points, and you can see this wasn't reached in the uh, intervention period. However, between T0 and T3, uh, so the whole period of, the, um, of this study, patients improved more than the minimal clinically important difference, uh, which means that patients may really have uh, felt an improvement in their arm and hand function. Then on to our second uh, arm function test, which is the Wolf Motor Function Test. Uh, during this test, patients have to uh, perform different arm movements and picking up different objects. The score is uh, between zero and 75 uh, points, and there were significant differences between T1 of T0, T2, and T1 and T3. Again, uh, we look at the minimal clinically important difference. And again, as you can see, this wasn't reached in the intervention period. However, between baseline and the end of the um, of this study, patients improved more than the minimal clinically important difference. Um, yeah, meaning that they may have uh, felt an improvement in arm and hand function. 
Our last uh, arm function test is the action research arm test. We only see a significant difference between T1 and T2, meaning that patients improved after the intervention. However, uh, this improvement wasn't larger than the minimal clinically important difference. And also over the whole period, there wasn't an improvement more than the minimal clinically important difference. And we think that it was because during the action research arm test, specific grasps, uh, finger grasps are um, requested from the patient. And uh, during training with the arm assist, only mass flexion and extension are practiced. So therefore, uh, the action research arm test um, yeah, may, may not be sufficient uh, to, to see any improvement on these tests. Then we go on to the user experience. So these were the questionnaires. Uh, the first is the system usability scale. Uh, a few questions about how, yeah, how the patient perceived the usability of the system between zero and 100%, and patients gave an evidence score of 77, which is qualified as good, uh, a good usability. Then the Dutch version of the Quebec user evaluation, uh, which is a score between one and five, is divided in two subscales, device and surface, and a total uh, quest score, which was 3.9, meaning that patients were satisfied uh, with the user, uh, yeah, the, yeah, they were satisfied with the evaluation of the device. Then we had uh, motivation, as Cherry also talked about, is really important aspect of uh, of training. Uh, it has different subscales. Uh, all the scores, the score was between zero and seven. As you can see, all scores were uh, were high. Many of the patients were really interested in this uh, training. They felt really competent. They put a lot of effort in it. Um, they felt that it was their choice to train, and uh, especially they felt that it uh, the usefulness was uh, really high, which is, of course, really important. Then there is one other subscale, which is the pressure. And as you can see, the pressure is really low. Um, this is a negative score, meaning that a low pressure is beneficial for the patient. Um, pa patients did report that they felt a lot of interesting pre pressure that they had to train because now they were given the opportunity to improve their arm and hand function. Then we want to, then I want to go on to the discussion and the conclusion. So we can uh, see that the arm function improved on multiple arm function tests and that the improvement was also retained after six weeks. Uh, the usability of the system was good. Patients were uh, happy with the device and satisfied. However, we did uh, get some feedback uh, related to some adverse events that occurred. So patients had some uh, pain in the shoulder, in the neck, uh, some pressure points on the hand that were painful and pain in the thumb. And we think that some device improvements can reduce uh, these events. So, for instance, the device was relatively high, and uh, this called tension on the shoulder and uh, um, in the neck. So, if the overall size of the device would be reduced, then that would um, prevent these uh, events from occurring. Furthermore, the hand grip uh, was for patients that had really large hands too small and vice versa. So if the hand grip would uh, be more adjustable to the size of the patient hand, that would also uh, improve the device. So we can conclude that patients improve their arm, their arm function using Merling. Uh, however, some device, device developments are advised. Uh, my take home message for today is take home Merlin. Thank you very much. Then I will give the Ainara. Yeah, thanks to you. Thanks for this <laughs> interesting presentation. Uh, yeah, and we will go to the next one. And thanks for for fitting to the to the schedule <laughs> uh, because you give us uh, a lot of uh, information in very short time. <laughs> <laughs> I will give okay. to to Pablo the the control for for going to the next one. Thanks. Good morning to, to everybody. My name is uh, Pablo Casado. Uh, I'm a specialist of physical medicine and rehabilitation in Reina Sofia Hospital. Is everything okay in the presentation? Uh, yeah, I can see your presentation, yeah. Perfect, thank you, Inara. Uh, you can go on. Well, perfect. Uh, well, I'm going to start uh, talking about the stroke. The stroke is an important cause of death, uh, physical disability and economic burden. 
and the incidence per year is uh, 13.7 million people and the death rate is uh, five and a half uh, million people per year. Most survivors uh, stay with uh, disability, uh, with chronic disability. So rehabilitation in upper limb is uh, important because it's just, they stay, the patients stay with between 10 and 20 percent and uh, the rehabilitation is slower and less complete. That's why the aims of rehabilitation are a uh, promote recovery of love pensions, independence, and reintegration in usual activities. Uh, high intensity, trust specific, uh, functional, repetitive, and uh, multidisciplinary care are needed. Uh, the increased prevalence and limited health resources uh, make a traditional approach uh, very difficult. So rehabilitation units uh, are changing nowadays uh, with growing demands. That's why the importance of robotic assistance and home-based therapy. The advantages of using them are high intensity, miserable, uh, repeatable motions uh, with humans and with real-time biofeedback. The purpose of this study uh, is to uh, validate the usability of pharmacies 2.0 in a home environment assessing the use to use, consistency, consistency, feasibility, and the sentence from patients and therapists. Uh, as Jacob Nielsen theory, uh, it was enough uh, between three and five users to detect a uh, most more than 85% usability problems, but uh, we consider to include nine patients in different stages uh, on evolution in order to detect uh, and to test different futures. Uh, strokes uh, patients were recruited uh, by neurorehabilitation unit in my hospital, in Reina Sofia Hospital in Cordoba, Spain. Uh, three patients per uh, age each stage, uh, pseudacute, short-term chronic, and long-term chronic. Having Wi-Fi at home and enough space for RMSIS 2.0 were requirements to participate. Experimental protocol uh, was approved by the Ethics Committee and uh, the Products and Medical Devices Agency. Uh, the design was an open level trial with a single group and longit longitudinal design uh, was retrospectively included and in clinical trials. Point gov uh, included three weeks. Uh, the first one in the IMIVIC facilities, our research center with a therapist and this, the the other two weeks the first one at uh, the at home uh, the, with physiotherapist physically and the other one with remote uh, support arm and hand function was evaluated before and, and after the treatment and feasibility study motivation and uh, usability was evaluation the last day of uh, participation and the the system was uh, uh, formed by device telerehabilitation platform and antari home care it facilitates a recovery of upper limb motor control with self-directed active movements interactive gaming goal oriented and functional tasks uh, participants stay in a comfortable position seated with the back support and chair height and the training and assessment uh, was uh, the position of shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand, as we can see in that video, uh, with the abduction and abduction shoulder, then a flexion and extension of the elbow, uh, the wrist position, and also hand grasping. Uh, the intervention sessions uh, therapy includes uh, three weeks uh, with uh, uh, in the total of uh, 11 sessions. The first of all, five sessions for one hour, and the second and the third one at home, as we said, uh, three sessions for 30 minutes. For each session, level and games were provided according to patient's evolution. Range of motion for this game was provided by the system to assess at very events. The subjects were asked 
at the end of each uh, session. Uh, the assessment of uh, primary outcomes, uh, we included uh, the questionnaire of evaluation of satisfaction uh, with uh, 12 questions, eight related to device and four to other related to other to other issues. Uh, the system usability survey reliable with 10 item questionnaire scores between 0 and 100 and a high score means uh, better. Intrinsic motivation uh, inventory adapt, measure interest, competence, support, usefulness and tension. The Armacy's usability assessment questionnaire, uh, 17 items about satisfaction, bags, negatives and improvements. And finally, short interview to ask the participants about the willingness to pay for uh, uh, Armacis 2.0. In the secondary outcome, clinical outcomes, a uh, final major scale for upper limb, which uh, measures sensory motor impairment stroke uh, with a total of uh, 66 points in divided in four sessions, uh, 36 in upper limb, 10 wrist, 14 hand, and six coordination. Modified dashboard scale measures muscle tone during passing, stretching, and estimating the resistance used um, as a measure of spasticity. And other uh, measures, evolution, scoring different games and tasks, duration and frequency of training recorded by Antari Home Care's platform. Data were collected and managed using a secure web-based software program to data capture called REDCAP, questionnaire and semi-structured interview with a descriptive to quantitative data provided by Likr scale and qualitative obtained with thematic analysis. Clinical assessment uh, were done uh, by Fagel Mayer and modified at well scale using SPSS 24th version. The scripted statistic presented uh, by mean uh, with the standard, standard deviation and a parity test was used to compare pre and post intervention in Fagel Mayer and modified as word scale. The results uh, nine hemiplegic subjects, uh, as uh, we told in the sample size, were recruited uh, from Reno Sofia Hospital and completed the study. Uh, six were men and three were women. Uh, numeric data will be reported and published soon, so to keep the originality, uh, I have no given uh, numeric uh, results and tables, figures, okay? Participants report, uh, reported no important intervention effects, which is important. Two problems, uh, some chafing on the skin and shoulder fatigue at the, at the end of the session. Usability per session was good. Participants considered it simple, easy to use and intuitive system. It could allow to, throw, to train longer and be more entertaining compa comparing to regular therapy, which is really interesting. All participants agreed that they would recommend the system to, to other patients and they were also interested to, to renting. Motivation and satisfaction were positive. Uh, participants were motivated during, during sessions and responded well to the treatment. Positive aspect, it was attractive, flexible, continuous, entertaining and easy as a negative not a low, completely relaxed posture, bulky dimensions, error in some gains, few different gains and boring graphics. Uh, the improvements, uh, they told, a uh, relaxed arm position, adjust dimension, reduce size, include more gains and more attractive complex with cognitive involvement. Uh, in the secondary outcomes, visible impro improvement in Fagel Major after training, be more significant in upper limb coordination and motor function. There were no significant change in modified dashboard scale with no influence at the spasticity. As the discussion, this is one of the few studies that uses assistive technology in stroke patients and include 
part of training with a use completely autonomously. No relationship between improvements in motor function and the evolution of the patient of the stroke. Relative to modified outward scale, no significant changing. We demonstrate no painful trigger trigger points. Future study, uh, we should incorporate greater number of participants, higher training duration, the incorporation of, of a high variety of games, and the possibility of more uh, movements of arm and, and hand. In the conclusions, the study demonstrates the usability of home-based system in stroke patients. Usability analysis show that almost all participants found it useful, safe, and interesting. All of them achieved moderate clinical improvements in motor function according to the average score of Fagenmeyer. Thank you to all. That's, that's all. Thanks, Pablo, for your presentation. Thank you for fitting also to the schedule. Uh, now is the time for doing any questions. Um, I can't see any question from from you, part, from any of the attendants. Um, please uh, use the chat, as I told you, for for requesting any question for for the attendants. For the for the speaker, sorry. Um, I have uh, some question for them. Let me see the camera. Sorry. Um, sorry for that. Um, I have some questions. Um, maybe for Samantha or also for Pablo regarding the the patients. Uh, if um, they after training with uh, this uh, Merli system, uh, I don't know if they have some uh, feedback from the patients if they will want to keep training with this uh, kind of system or if they feel that uh, it could be useful to to keep working with this kind of system in, in short time, if they feel this kind of technologies could be used in, in their daily life. They have the, this kind of uh, feedback for the for the patients. If you could uh, answer, I think that yes, uh, yes, I can answer oh. this question. Uh, so patients uh, during the interviews that we uh, also got for, uh, well performed with the patients, they almost all also said that they would have uh, yeah if if the possibility was there, they would have keep the device for a longer period of time. And also the same as in uh, the other study that Pablo told, uh, they also wanted to train, uh, they would advise this device to other patients. So they were overall really satisfied with the device. Some patients also said, I would like to have it again if these device improvements would have been uh, yeah, altered. So yeah, the overall satisfaction was really good. Paolo wants to add something else. I don't know. Maybe you are. Uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you, Inara. Uh, my feedback for the study uh, in short term uh, treatment is really good uh, um, because uh, we have uh, we have had uh, three weeks uh, to see uh, the evolution. Uh, what the patient thinks about uh, all the usability, motivation, um, and it, the results uh, were really, really good and promising. But I am interested uh, in to see uh, in, in long-term results, because uh, we know that the stroke is a uh, chronic uh, um, affectation and it's, it's important to see the evolution in motor control also and spasticity but what the 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 people how they react to to the treatment in long term is really really also interesting mm -hmm. okay thanks 
Uh, we have uh, some questions from the attendees. Uh, one is uh, related to the technology. If uh, the patients that uh, have uh, already suffered these uh, strokes could uh, access to this kind of technologies. Um, regarding the hospital, do you know if uh, it's this kind of technology available right now in at the hospitals, or do you feel that uh, it's possible in short, mid term, have this kind of technology? And it's for it's for me, Aina, the question? For you both in at the hospitals? Yeah. Uh, at the hospital, um, I I think first of all we need enough evidence uh, to to recommend and to that the 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 governments, uh, regional government, for example, uh, approve uh, to the the product to uh, use in uh, clinical practice uh, uh, usual. So uh, we need first uh, studies and evidence, and I would like uh, to have uh, uh, this possibility. Uh, I am looking forward to because it's really useful. Um, uh, treatment times uh, with physiotherapists at hospital, we know that it recommends uh, six months. And we see patients that, that uh, improve in one year or in two years. It's not um, one thing is a recommendation in clinical guidelines, but other things is what we see in clinical practice. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to to have this in the at hospital, but. First of all, uh, what the uh, uh, heads and uh, government uh, are going to to uh, to uh, to demand and uh, to ask uh, is uh, the information, uh, the evidence, uh, the evidence of the studies, and especially also worried about the the cost. We we can't forget the cost, but uh, we need we need evidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are some questions regarding also the the availability of of the final product in in the market and also in the hospitals. I can give a, a brief answer on that. Uh, in Merlin Project in the IT Health, we are working on that uh, with uh, Proxima Company. We are doing the certification of the product, and uh, hopefully, it will be available in the market. Uh, during the beginning of next year and we hope to, to have the possibility of having it in, in the hospital soon uh, yes. not only in Spain but also in any place in Europe uh, so we hope to have this this possibility there uh, and regarding to to the they are asking us also about uh, the, the time that uh, a patient needs to to get some results on, on the recovering, I don't know if uh, you as experts in, in clinics, you can give us a, an overview on that. Uh, how long do you think that uh, it's needed on, on patients to do some therapy to see some results on that? I suppose that it depends also on, on the <laughs> impairment of, of the patients. But, uh, I would like to comment on that. So mm -hmm. uh, in the literature, we know that around uh, 16 hours are needed to have functional improvements. Of course, this also depends on in which phase uh, of stroke you are. Are you in the subacute phase? So uh, immediately after the stroke or after six months in the post-stroke um, phase, as we have now uh, uh, explored. So I think uh, it really depends on this, but at least those 16 hours are now kind of like what you need. But I think it also depends on in which time frame you do, do this. So we know that like a lot of re repetitions are really uh, Im important. So I think uh, the intensity of the therapy is also uh, really important. And I think that Merlin really uh, helps this because patients are able to train when they want and they are not dependent on a therapist to give them the training, but they can train yeah uh, as much as they want so yeah mm -hmm. uh, they are asking us also if uh, this kind of um, 
system could be used not only for uh, post-stroke patients, but also for other kind of injury or other kind of patients. Do you have any experience of, on that? In in other in other pathologies, neurology, uh, uh, no, no I, we don't have uh, experience. Uh, I would like to to see and to investigate and research uh, the effect in in a spinal uh, a spinal injury. It, it will be really really interesting because. Uh, uh, it's a simil something similar to to stroke. Uh, we we see the first uh, six months uh, or a year, but we don't know the effects uh, in two years or three years. It would be really 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 interesting to to see the results also. Also, the neurodegenerative uh, in, uh, injuries. Uh, which is, uh, for example, multiple sclerosis, uh, to to keep uh, the the motor uh, function, the spasticity. Uh, it would be it, we could uh, we could include in, in many neurologic injuries the the robotic uh, therapy. It would be really useful for 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 us in the clinical practice. I would mm -hmm. like to 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 have it. I'm, as I said, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, according to the to the news you have uh, there in Cordoba and, and in Groningen, and maybe according to the current situation with the COVID and using this tele rehabilitation, uh, do you know or could you? do an estimation about uh, the number of the systems that uh, you would need to cover all the needs uh, with the patients you have or be very difficult to, to estimate something like this <laughs> it's one of the questions <laughs> i think that's pretty difficult because some patients i think patients that responded to this um this project Right, are really eager to improve their arm function and uh, maybe there are also some patients that do not want to invest the time and energy to uh, improve. Um, I think also it would be really nice to see if, how this, uh, how the arm cyst could be uh, used in the subacute phase. So then you need it in, re in a rehabilitation center where more people can use it so that uh, maybe even more cost effective to cost effective to have it in the rehabilitation center so a lot of patients can use it because at home only one patient can use it so maybe at a physiotherapy clinic for instance that patients can go there and train there on their own without uh yeah a physical uh, guidance of a therapist but i think it's really difficult to make really an estimate of it <laughs> but i think it can have a lot of different uh at different places it can be can be used so we need a lot <laughs> yeah I agree. I agree with Samantha. Uh, for example, the, from March to May in Spain uh, at hospitals, rehabilitation units um, uh, are not could could not treat uh, as uh, we we as we wanted because uh, the situation the. Uh, cleaning situation of the therapy rooms so uh, it it would be it would, it would have be really useful to have the the, the device uh, but before the the situation before it started uh, but uh, from now on uh, uh, we, i think it this situation in COVID uh, uh, time uh, is for for us. Uh, we have to we have to think a lot about uh, the usefulness of having uh, telematic uh, devices and continue the treatment if in at hospitals it not if it is not possible. Okay. Okay. We have a uh, last question because uh, we have some time for that. 
uh, they are asking if uh, the system will be available in, in any European country. I can say that uh, we have a pre-order now in, in Spain, uh, waiting for the certification of the product and the manufacturing. And we have also some interest uh, from some Eastern uh, countries, uh, Eastern uh, European countries. Uh, so it will be certified uh, for World Europe, but uh, the company that uh, will manufacture it uh, will be in Serbia. Uh, so we are expecting to, to sell it uh, first in Eastern Europe. Uh, and uh, they are also uh, asking us if uh, we are expecting to expand it to other countries out of uh, Europe. We are working in certifying it uh, also in, in China. We are working on that. Uh, so it will be also available there in that market. Uh, this is what we are working on uh, right now. Um, if it's successful, we will go on to our uh, um, I think that uh, we don't have more time for additional questions. I think that uh, everything is going on. Thank you, you all, for attending the, you, this webinar. Uh, here you have uh, our emails in case that you want to contact us uh, for any question that uh, we couldn't attend during the webinar or any further question mm -hmm. that uh, you have after this webinar. It has been recorded, so you will be contacted by email with the link uh, when the video is available online. Uh, thank you all for attending. Thank you. And thank you to all. the speakers for, for this. Thank you. So thank, thank you to all. You're Thanks. welcome. Welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.